Hello, I'm Greg Jarrett for FoxNews.com. We're focusing on a loophole that is putting vulnerable communities at risk. This one has to do with Bruner Island Power Station in Pennsylvania. It's the only coal-fired power plant in the state without the pollution controls that would protect communities from large quantities of nitrogen oxide. My next guest saw for herself what this really means for people living near the plant. In an op-ed in the Huffington Post, she writes the following. Because of this loophole, sickly-looking yellow smoke disgorges into the atmosphere with no buffer between the contaminants and your lungs. Here now to talk about it, former Pennsylvania congressional candidate and environmental activist, Lindy Lee. Lindy, thanks for being with us. So how did this loophole happen? Thank you so much for having me today. Well, the law makes sure that every single coal plant in Pennsylvania has to install these pollution controls, but this specific coal plant, so it's exempt from other, the laws that other coal plants have to comply with. Yeah. And how is it impacting not just communities around the plant, but the state itself? Well, because of wind currents, actually, Philadelphia is now the third worst city in the country for those who suffer from asthma. And, and not only does it impact millions of Pennsylvanians, Connecticut and Delaware have filed complaints against us at the EPA because our pollution and our actions makes it difficult for them to comply with the Clean Air Act. Are people turning up sick, going to doctors, oh, complaining about this, and relating it to the plant? Oh, definitely. Philadelphia has the fifth highest number of asthma cases in the country. Right. This, the wind just blows across southeastern Pennsylvania. And um, Bruner Island is the single largest stationary source of coal pollution in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's devastating. I would think that residents would be complaining to their elected officials and that some of these elected officials would be trying to take aggressive action to close the loophole and stop the contaminants. Definitely. I'm actually extremely grateful to Congressman Bob Brady, Matt Cartwright, and um, Brennan Boyle for taking a stand on this extremely important issue because our children, our elderly are at risk because of these actions. Um, are, are they going to succeed in closing the loophole and correcting the, you know, the contaminants? You know what's heartbreaking? The Citizens Advisory Council petitioned Pennsylvania's Department of Environmental Protection saying that this is unfair if this single coal plant is exempt. Um, the DEP decided not to take that advice. So right now we are just petitioning, hoping the EPA is going to do the right thing and save these lives. What's their motivation or rationale underlying their claim that this is unfair, we shouldn't have to you know, put controls on the contaminants? So this is the bookworm in me. I'm actually reading a book called The Rise of Theodore Roosevelt. And the reason why this is relevant to our discussion today is President Theodore Roosevelt was Republican, as we all know, but he was a strong champion for conservation. This should not be a partisan issue. I, unfortunately, I think it's, it's a health issue. It's a, exactly, sir. It's a public health issue with grave ramifications. And so I think politicians from both sides of the aisle need to come together and realize that people are suffering because of this. And it's, we have one thing that I want to mention. In the year 2016, 25 of those days were code orange days, meaning children and the elderly should not go outside. Well, maybe the rationale is, wait a minute, if we put controls on this and stop the release of the contaminants, that's going to cost jobs, and they care more about jobs than public health? Perhaps. At the same time, I don't believe that economic opportunity and public health are mutually exclusive. Right. Lindy Lee, thank you for being with us and explaining the dangers of this and what's being done or what they're trying to do at least. Thank you so much for having me today. All right. Stick with us at foxnews.com for updates on this very story. I'm Greg Jarrett. Thanks for joining.